Hi, we're gonna read an Eric Carl book, A House for Hermit Crab. So here's the front cover, there's Hermit Crab. Here's the back cover, there's Eric Carl. Here is my spine of a big fat book today. All right, and we're gonna have a tall spine, just like a book, straight. And we're gonna take a deep breath. And we'll begin. So <clears throat> here's the title page. A House for Hermit Crab by Eric Carl. Time to move, said Hermit Crab one day in January. I've grown too big for this little shell. There he is. He had felt safe and snug in his shell, but now it was too snug. Hermit Crab stepped out of his shell and onto the floor of the ocean, but it was frightening in the open sea without a shell to hide in. What if a big fish comes along and attacks me, he thought. I must find a new home soon. There's some fish. And here's Hermit Crab again, remember? His shell got too small, so he has to find a new one, and he feels scared. Have you ever felt scared about something new? All right, early in February, okay, it was January, now it's February, Hermit Crab found just the house he was looking for. Look, there it is. Isn't it pretty? Um, it was a big shell and strong, and he moved right in, wiggling and waggling about inside to see how it felt, and it felt just right. But it looks so plain, thought Hermit Crab. All right, there he is, and there's his shell, and he thinks it looks really plain. I mean, it is kind of just white, so we'll see. Maybe he has an idea. In March... Hermit Crab met some sea anemones and they swayed back and forth gently. Look, anemones. That's a hard word to say. Can you try it? Anemones. Anemones. All right, how beautiful you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and live on my house? It's so plain. It needs you. There he is, he's asking that anemone if he'll live on his house. I'll come, whispered a small sea anemone. Gently, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his shell. There we go. He has a decoration and a little friend. In April, Hermit Crab passed a flock of starfish moving slowly across the sea floor. Look at these starfish, what color are they? They're so pretty, they're blue and green. All right, how handsome you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to decorate my house? I would, signaled a little sea star. This one right here. And carefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his house. All right, there he is. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? He has his anemone and his sea star. In May, that's the month we're in. In May, Hermit Crab discovered some coral. They were hard and didn't move. All right, here's the coral. Mm -hmm. How pretty you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to make my house beautiful? What do you think? Will one of the coral do it? I would, creaked a crusty coral. And gingerly, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and set it on his shell. All right, so now look how pretty his shell is getting. He's got his anemone his sea star, and now his coral. All right, what month comes after May? Does anybody know what next month is? It's a summer month, June. In June, Hermit Crab came to a group of snails crawling over a rock on the ocean floor. All right, here they are. There's a whole bunch of them. They grazed as they went, picking up algae and bits of debris and leaving a neat path behind them. How tidy and hardworking you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and help keep my house clean? I would, offered one of the snails, and happily Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. All right, here we go. Here's Hermit Crab. He's got an enemy, 
sea star, coral, snail. All right, after June comes July. In July, hermit crab came ac across several sea urchins. They had sharp, prickly needles. Here's the sea urchins. They look purple to me. Uh, how fierce you look, said hermit crab. Would one of you be willing to protect my house? I would, answered a spiky sea urchin. So gratefully, hermit crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. All right, here we go. We have anemone, sea star, coral, snail, urchin. In August, that's my birthday month. Hermit Crab and his friends wandered into a forest of seaweed. Oh my goodness, look at all that seaweed. Oh, it's so dark in here, said Hermit Crab. How dim it is, murmured the sea anemone. How gloomy it is, whispered the starfish. How murky it is, complained the coral. I can't see, said the snail. It's like nighttime, cried the sea urchin. Oh. In September, Hermit Crab spotted a school of lanternfish darting through the dark water. Lanternfish. Look at that. They're lighting up. How bright you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to light up our house? I would, replied one lanternfish, and it swam over near the shell. All right, here we go. Here's Hermit Crab. He has his anemone, his sea star, his coral, his snail, his urchin in front of him right here, and now he has a lanternfish friend. In October, Hermit Crab approached a pile of smooth pebbles. See these pebbles? That's a fancy word for small rocks. How sturdy you are, said Hermit Crab. Would you mind if I rearranged you? Not at all, answered the pebbles. So Hermit Crab picked up one by one with his claw and he built a little wall around his shell. Now my house is perfect, said Hermit Crab. All right, he's got it perfect. He's got it just the way he likes it. Here he is with his little smooth pebble wall. All right, and let's check his friends. Let's see, he has his anemone, he has his sea star, he has his coral and his snail. He has his sea urchin right here. He has his lantern fish right here, and now he has his wall. But in November, Hermit Crab felt that his shell seemed a bit too small. He's still growing. Are you growing? Little by little over the year, Hermit Crab had grown, and soon he would have to find a bigger home. But he had come to love his friends. Oh, the sea anemone, the starfish, the coral, the sea urchin, the snail, the lanternfish, and even the smooth pebbles. They've been so good to me, thought Hermit Crab. They're like a family. How will I ever leave them? There they are. In December, a smaller Hermit Crab passed by. I have outgrown my shell, she said. Here she is. She needs a shell. Would you know of a place for me? I have outgrown my house too, answered Hermit Crab. I must move on and you're welcome to live here, but you must promise to be good to my friends. I promise, said the little crab. So the following January, Hermit Crab stepped out <clears throat> and the little crab moved in. Couldn't I stay in that little shell forever, said Hermit Crab as he waved goodbye. The ocean floor looked wider than he'd remembered. But Hermit Crab wasn't afraid. He soon spied the perfect house. Look. <sighs> it was a huge empty shell. Well, it looked a little plain, but sponges, he thought. Barnacles, clownfish, sand dollars electric eels. Oh, there's so many possibilities. I can't wait to get started. The end. And there's a pretty coral at the back of the book. I like this story because it talks about how sometimes we're in a place that feels really comfortable, like Rise School, like Red Room, but sometimes we grow and we get bigger 
and rice school's too small for us, right? And we have to leave. We have to go to a new school, a bigger school, kindergarten maybe, or pre-K, right? And it's going to be okay. It's going to be an adventure. You'll make new friends, right? And you'll have new adventures and it's going to be awesome. All right, guys, I love you. I miss you and I wish you well.